student at work knew that I'd acted up, got a spanking at, home, at her house. <laughs> and then I got home and got the real bill from my dad <laughs> when Mrs. Carwell from my school called home. So I had, that was like the trifecta, you know, I had just three, three moments, three, three uh, spankings in the same, uh, the same day. But I tell you that because it was my parents and our community that did this because they loved me. They wanted the best for me. So there's an African proverb that says, it takes a village to raise a child. And you guys aren't children anymore. You're going to be the future leaders, the future explorers, the future scientists, the future doctors, the future whatever you dream. So I know all of you dream in here, and I'm hopefully, hopefully it's not too many nightmares. But whatever you dream, and I, and I have a pad of paper by my bed that when I wake up from sleeping, and if I've dreamt something, I will try to write it down. Because lots of times, the solutions to problems that you have today will come out in your dreams. So one recommendation is to keep a pad of paper by your bed when you wake up, because you might have a solution to AIDS or to a homework assignment, to something that will help change the world. Because when I look at you in here, you are the future world changers. And I truly believe that. And I'm in education now to help motivate and inspire and give you the tools that you need so that you can live your dreams and figure out the path from where you are now to how you get to that place in your dreams. So I'm going to show you a few slides from space and a few other things. Um, what inspired me besides having this hand in my development? Um, it was creativity. How many skateboarders are in here? Skateboarders, snowboarders, <laughs> ball players, football, basketball, tennis, yep. soccer, <laughs> swimming. Okay. Well. My, both of my parents were school teachers, so we didn't have a whole lot of money back in the day, but that's me on my, can you turn the lights down? Just a little, can you guys see this okay? Okay, let's, let's fix that. Why don't we turn these lights down a little bit so they can see the screen? And I'll stop sweating so much too. Um, can you get those back lights, someone? Can anyone hear me? <laughs> Maybe not. All right, if you can work on the lights while I'm talking, but that's me. And uh, Butch Jones, Butch, Butch's mother was the one who had the hand in my development. <laughs> we, um, we actually made our own skateboards. We didn't have a lot of cash, so I went to the wood shop. We built the, we built the board, we bought the trucks, we scrambled some money and bought the trucks. But it was that creativity, figuring out a way to do things. I love photography, I love math, I love science, I love sports. And it was when my mom gave me a chemistry set when I was in seventh grade, it taught me how to discover things. I mixed two dissimilar chemicals together and created this fantastic explosion. <laughs> I mean, it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. You know, these colors and smoke. And I had another hand in my development again because I burned a hole in a rug. And my mom was pretty upset. but. That fueled my curiosity and led me to becoming a chemist in college. So where did that lead me? It led me to becoming an athlete, played, in, uh, played football and basketball and tennis growing up, but it was my senior year in high school. It was kind of a defining moment for me. I, um, I was wide receiver, we were down by touchdown, I was flanked out, running down the sideline, the crowd was screaming, the crowd was screaming. <laughs> Ball is coming into my hands. What do you think happened? Yeah. I dropped the tip of my hands. <laughs> <laughs> right. Homecoming game. You know you're supposed to play someone sorry right. so you win the game. <laughs> and here I am dropping the touchdown. So my coach, Jimmy Green, he believed in me. He said, Leland, you brought me to the sideline, grab my face mask, the coach like snatch me to the bench. But instead he said, Leland, go out there, run the same play, and catch the ball. So this time, I'm lined up. God, please let me catch this one. <laughs> I'm down the sideline. The ball's coming. I see it. I can read Spalding as it's coming in. And I pull it in and catch it. We win the game. Yeah. 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 Moral of the story is don't give up. All of us fail or something. 
That was a horrific failure. All my friends came back from college and saw me drop a touchdown pass in the end zone. Okay? You're the, ah, uh. <laughs> But I didn't give up. And unbeknownst to me, in the stands, there was a, there was a, a coach from the University of Richmond, Morgan Howe, who was a wide receiver coach at Richmond. He was looking to see if I could play football at the University of Richmond. Now, after driving that touchdown pass in the end zone, he started walking out of the stadium. When he heard the crowd screaming for the second time, he poked his head back over and saw him in the end zone with the ball in my hand. And then he said to himself, well, if he can overcome such a horrific failure, then maybe he can play for us. So that one catch netted me about $160,000 scholarship. So, the moral of the story is, when you fail, because you will fail, everyone fails at something, is what you do after you fail. You don't give up, you keep going. And that's what led me to getting a chemistry degree as a math scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Loved uh, chemistry from that initial chemistry set, blowing things up, watching the beautiful colors float around before the hand of my development. <laughs> um, graduated from Richmond with a chemistry degree, and our team went from 0 and 10 to 8 and 10 in the playoffs at the University of Richmond. And so the, the pro scouts came down and looked at me and thought I could maybe play some professional football. So that's me, the pitcher up there, um, Detroit Lions, 1986 NFL college draft, pulled a hamstring, muscles pretty bad, and then bounced around on some other teams, front Argonauts and the Dallas Cowboys before realizing that football was not going to be my deal. In the meantime, I started graduate school in material science engineering at the University of Virginia. And, you know, I always knew that education was going to be something that would take me, take me places. It wasn't going to be athletics. And so I, I got a master's degree in material science engineering and then went to work for NASA Langley Research Center as a research scientist. I went there for 10 years, about eight years, and a friend of mine said, Neely, you'd be a great astronaut. Great astronaut. I'm like, what do you mean? So I, didn't, I didn't really see anyone that looked like me, didn't really know much about the program, even though I was working for NASA. You'd be a great astronaut. So he hands me this application. I look at it, I put it down, don't fill it out. And that same year, another friend of mine, Charles DeMarta, I'd been working with him. He filled the application out, and he got into the program. And so the next election, I said to myself, if that knucklehead can get in, <laughs> I can get in. There's a little competition there. So you can't get in the game unless you fill out the application. Anything that you want to do with your lives, you've got to be present. You've got to fill out the application. You've got to have the skills. You know, if I were to go and ask my coach, me in the game, if he hadn't seen the preparation that I had given, all the dedication, the hard work, everything to be ready to get in the game, then I would never have been able to get in the game. So do everything in your power to be ready to get in the game. Um, just another defining moment for me, I was working in Washington, D.C. in the Education Department, this is back in 2003, and a number of you probably know this crew, the STS 107 crew, um, the Columbia accident. How many of you remember that? Some of you are fairly young. But, um, you know, I was working there in D.C., working in the education program. I was driving home. My boss called me and said, Leland, something's wrong. The countdown clock at the Cape is now counting up. And I said to myself, that's not good. Turned around, went back to D.C. You know, at that point, I knew what had happened. The Columbia had broken up. But the defining moment, one of the, the really major defining moments for me was when I went out to Dave Brown. Dave Brown was the gentleman on the top left. He was a medical doctor. He was a flight surgeon, flew at teens, military guy. The nicest guy in the world. Went to his parents' home in Washington, Virginia, and his dad, the night of the accident, looked me in the eye and said, Leland, my son is gone. There's nothing you can do to bring him back. He's gone. He said, but the biggest tragedy would be if you don't continue to find space and carry on his legacy. And when I think about legacy, I think about you guys. You are the legacy of your parents. 
you know, you will have children one day, they will be your legacy. So it's all about doing whatever you can, your power, 